Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 24th in a series of video tutorials for Unity 5. So this episode we're going to cover a couple of things. We're going to cover sun shafts, we're going to cover bloom, and both of them are something which can make your graphics look a little better or enhanced or change in whatever way you want it to look when it's on screen. And we're also going to look at um, creating a save file to save your game. So firstly, I'm going to delve into Bloom. Now, if you go down here to your assets window and in the search box, type in Bloom, hopefully you should get um, at least some results here and specifically this C sharp script called Bloom. If you don't, you may need to right click, uh, import package and go to effects. If you don't have that, you only have custom package, head over to the Unity website and you can download the standard assets for your version of Unity right there. So make sure you've got your uh, effects imported, make sure you've got your Bloom script there. Now for this to work accurately, this Bloom script has to be applied to wherever your camera is looking. In this case, it's on our first person controller and on our first person character. Right here is the camera. So drag and drop this script onto your first person character. And over here, you'll have the couple of options for Bloom. So let's go through this now. Quality, I always like to keep as high. If you're developing for a lower end PC, if, you, if you're not too bothered about quality, go for cheap. But I always like to select high. I always like to try and get the best possible graphics, best possible look, the best possible everything in Unity. Mode, uh, we'll stick with basic. There's no need to go into complex at the moment. It's just becoming overcomplicated. Blend, um, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, but I like to do have screen selected. Just uh, It makes it a little bit easier to work with, to be honest. HDR, keep as auto. We don't need to set on or off. We'll leave the script to decide whichever one we want. Intensity and threshold, I'm going to leave just for now because they're the two which really enhance what you see on your screen. Blur iterations, um, obviously the, the blurrier it is, the more fantasy it will look. It, because it's blurry, it may not necessarily look as though it's a bad game. Um, but just to prove a point, I'm gonna keep this as four, which is the maximum you can have. Sample distance, don't worry about too much, we'll keep it as 2.5. So the intensity and the threshold, we can play around with. So I'm gonna press play and we'll have a look at our game. And hopefully already you may see a little bit of a difference. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to get off there and I'm gonna play with um, the, let's play with the intensity. So let's set this as six. And hopefully now, if you're in the same position as me, you can see over the hills that the glow has got quite deep. You can really see it glowing from the sky. Now if we play with the threshold, if we set this to zero, you can see that the screen is quite bright. So the lower it is, the brighter your screen's gonna be. So let's set this to five. You can see it's kind of back to normal. And that intensity we set to six isn't really affecting it too much. So you can use this uh, threshold. For example, here's a scenario. There's a giant fireball coming down from the sky and it falls in the distance and everything gets uh, blown up, it gets white hot, you could use an animation or even a script to slowly decrease this threshold value and once you get to about here you can see it starting to get as though it's been hit by a fireball. So you could use that in many different ways. So I want this to look somewhat decent, I want it to look kind of fantasy like so let's try and set that up now. I'm going to change the intensity to one point, maybe two, so we get a bit of a glow. And I'm going to decrease the threshold to maybe 0 0.1. Maybe it's a bit low, maybe 0 0.2. Okay, so with them settings, I'm going to go wander off. And it looks a bit not bad, but it looks a bit more like it would be a fantasy based world now. So you can see off into the distance there. So as I've modified these during gameplay, them two will change. So let's stop the gameplay. 
and then let's input our settings back. We had 1.2 on intensity and 0.2 on threshold. So next thing, let's deal with our sun shafts. So where you got bloom, let's clear that and let's type in sun. You should have this one here, just C sharp, simply called sun shafts. Works the same way as bloom, drag and drop onto the first person character. And I'm gonna pull out my inspector pane a little bit so as the bar at the bottom disappears. Now, I'm gonna go with resolution as high. Again, if you're not too bothered or you're aiming for lower end, go for normal, uh, go for low, whichever. Blend mode, always try and keep the same as whatever blend option you have selected in Bloom. In this case, screen, that's fine. Shafts caster, don't worry about, that's not important for now. Threshold color. Now, this determines what kind of color that you will have appearing from your sunlight. So ideally, if you're going for this type of fantasy game, you want some nice sunlight. The first one needs to be set as kind of a, not quite a brown, but a deep sort of orange. And then the shafts colour will be a kind of off yellow colour. So about that. That will give you a nice effect for, for some decent sunlight. I'll show you how that looks in just a second. Distance fall off. Um, don't need to worry about that too much. Let's set that as, in fact, let's leave that as 0 0.25. It's not too important. Blur size. Now, just because it's high in blur again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to look bad. So I'm going to set this to 10, just to kind of prove a little point. Blur iterations, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same as what the blur iterations is in Bloom. So I'm going to keep that as 2. Again, you can fiddle with them settings and see how it looks. Intensity, um, not too important. I'm going to have this as 0 0.6, which is half of what our intensity is on the Bloom. So again, it doesn't have to exactly relate to this intensity in Bloom, but keeping it as a lower number than the intensity in Bloom it might be a wise idea. So now let's press play and let's see if we can see our sun shafts in action. So if we look around, you should be able to see the sun shining in our eyes. When we're looking at a tree, for example, the sun shafts don't affect us too much, but as we pull off, you should be able to see the sun shafts move around. So staring directly into the sky, you'd be blinded by the sun a little, like you would in real life. So I recommend playing around with them settings, trying to get it exactly how you look. If you're going for, say, I don't know, maybe a space style game, the threshold color and shafts color in your sun shafts would be maybe like kind of grays, blues, even blacks to give you that kind of effect. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that sun, just to clear out the search. We're going to create uh, a script which allows us to save. So first things first, what you could possibly do is head over to the folder where your Unity project is stored. For me, in this instance, it's in my documents, Jimmy, Unity project, JV5, JV5. Now it's called JV5 um, because I think this is probably the fifth tutorial I started on my channel. Um, I think that's the reason why it's called JV5, but that was well over a year ago now. And if you're watching this in 2017, 2018, whatever, then it was a few years ago. Um, at this point, though, this is the folder where we're going to have our save file. We may change it to a subfolder later on, but for now, it's going to be in here. You don't need to create a file at the moment in here. Unity will do that itself. So head back to Unity, head into your scripts folder. Let's right click, create script and I'm going to call this one saving the game and open that up in whichever script editor you use. I'm going to develop for me. So just like we do with every other script um, I'm going to get rid of all that and we're going to start again. So if you remember from the last episode, I think it was the last episode, um, we dealt with the quests and we had this exit wood and we used the function on trigger enter. We're going to use that again in this one. So we need to set 
Um, in fact, I'll go down to the third line just in case because um, we may need to import something later on. We'll see what happens with the script first. So the first variable needs to be the name of our file that we're going to use. So var file name. And instead of putting a colon, we need to put equals. And let's see, let's call this something simple like save game dot data quote semicolon now you can name this as literally anything you want as long as you've got um for example the, the file name and then the suffix at the end so you could have save game dot data save game dot text save game dot jjfy whatever you want as long as you know what that file is so as I say, the function we're going to use is this one from last time. So function on trigger enter. I'm going to copy and paste rather than type the whole thing out, save time on this tutorial. But I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs. You know how to use functions now. So that is the function on trigger enter, call, collider. So now we need to set another variable inside this function. We need to call it something like our file. So var our file and this needs to be um, equal to file dot create text and remember the capitalization as always open bracket file name close bracket semicolon so if you've called your variable, the, the first variable, uh, let's say, I don't know, house, then just put house instead of file name in this create text. So the next thing we need to do is we need to write to this file a particular value which we can then reference and import when we load the file into our game. So let's just put our file dot write line and then in brackets and quotes let's put something that we can remember fairly decently let's have save area 001 quote close bracket semicolon now i'm going to go down two lines there because we may modify the script a little more in just a second we then need to close the file so our file dot close open close bracket semicolon, next line down, close curly bracket, and save. Now let's head back into Unity. Hopefully it should be okay. So as I said earlier, we may need to import. You see here this error, unknown identifier file. If that is the case, you have that error. First line you need to put import, then system dot io semicolon and save so you just need to import the fact well you basically need to tell unity that it needs to access the file system to use this particular function so like that uh, import line in head back to unity hopefully we're okay we won't have any errors we don't if you do have errors you're having problems head over to the website head to the downloads and assets section you can download the script free won't cost you a penny so what I'm going to do now is, much in the same way we created uh, this cube here, which triggered our exit wood script, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to, in fact I'll rename it as well, let's do saving, I'm going to right click over here and remove the exit wood script. And I want to drag and drop the saving the game script onto that object. Right there, and you'll see it appear over here. There's the file name, save game.data. Let's drag it over just a little bit. And I'm going to save my project there. So remember, this folder, we haven't created the file. Unity will do that itself. So once we press play, Let's head over in that direction, all the way over. So at the moment, we still not created a file. 
it should save just after we start our next script. So there. We should have crossed it by now. So I'm going to go over here into JV5. And there it is. Save game.data. Unity has now written this file to your hard drive. That is your save game right there. So if we double click and go into it, you can see the text that we specified in our script should be written to this file. So that's all good and well. But let's say, for example, well, a save file contains a lot of data, not necessarily just save area 001. So to go into just slightly more detail before we end this tutorial, I'm going to copy that, paste it on the next line down, and I'm going to put um, load, let's say, 10 coins and save. So by all standards, that file there, save game, it still has save area 001, but I'll tell you what, let's have, instead of save area 001, let's have saving the game and save. So I'm going to close that now. So when we cross this again, it will execute the change in line that we've written, so saving the game, and it will also add the second line, which is the load 10 coins. So let's head over there and just check everything works as it should do. So it'll trigger just after this conversation. OK. So now let's head to there, save game. And you can see that's fine. So you can go down that all the way. Now, the idea of how this will work is you can save all your variables. For example, how many coins you've got, which part of the map you're in, um, what weapon you've collected. You can use all different things in this one file to save. So next episode, we're going to look at importing that file into Unity so it can load itself. And eventually we'll bring ourselves onto the fact of our title screen where we can click load and it will bring us where we left off rather than start the whole game again. So using a save and load function such as this in Unity makes things easier. I know there is a way of using player stats to save your details, but I find that a little impersonal. Being able to create a save file on your own machine makes things a little bit easier, and especially when debugging. So as I say, if you're having problems, you can head up to the website. You should be able to download this script. I'll stick it up there for you for free. No problems. Um, you play around with your Sunshaft and Bloom. You get it how you want it to look. And yeah, next tutorial, we'll see where we go from there. So until then, thank you very much for watching.